This video is the first of a multi-part series on the history of marquetry. It will cover works done from ancient times up to the 19th century. Subsequent videos will highlight the work of contemporary marqueterians. It is taken from my recent book, Painting with Light, A Guide to Laser Marquetry and Inlay, and is available on Amazon.com. People have been making pictures using wood for thousands of years. This coffer was found in a tomb made for the young Egyptian king Tutankhamun in the 12th century BCE. The ebony, ivory, gold, and silver inlays show the impeccable craftsmanship the Egyptians used frequently on coffins and urns. The Roman author Pliny the Elder wrote extensively on the types of trees that worked well in veneers. The Levitan monks in Siena developed their own brand of wooden inlay known as intarsia to decorate churches during the 13th century. They used a long chisel called a shoulder knife to carve beautiful scenes from quarter inch thick wooden slabs. As this type of woodwork spread throughout Europe, two innovations helped further the craft. First, sawmills became powered by water wheels, which made it easier to create much thinner veneers than the old hand sawing techniques. Secondly, a German clockmaker invented the jigsaw blade, which made for more accurate cutting possible, lowering the production time and allowed for multiple layers of veneer to be cut simultaneously. France became the center of inlay artwork during the 18th century, coining the term marquetry from the French word for inlay for their products. King Louis XIV sponsored the work of the master cabinet maker André Charles Boulle Known as the Furniture Jeweler, Boulle founded an influential school in 1886, the Ecole Boulle, which had a huge influence on marquetry and supplied much of the furniture in the Palace of Versailles. He refined a technique where multiple layers of veneer were cut simultaneously, creating very clean seams between the adjoining shapes. Around this time, a new tool was developed to make commercial production of marquetry more accurate and efficient. The marquetry donkey, or chevalet, is a bench that uses a foot-activated mechanism that holds the layers tight while cutting. Located in the town of Nantes, about 100 miles west of Paris, became the center of the Art Nouveau movement for furnishings in France. What is unique about Nantes is that it became a major manufacturing area that encouraged art, artists and designers from many fields to collaborate together. Emile Gallet was a glass artist, furniture designer, and manufacturer who turned an old pottery factory into the most prolific maker of marquetry products in France. The Dawn and Dusk Bed is perhaps his best known piece and was designed in 1901. As marquetry flourished in France, it was also in Germany during the 18th and 19th centuries. The most well-known German marqueterian was David Rentgen. His furniture was very popular, with many secret drawers and devices. Marquetry came to America during the mid-19th century and enjoyed a brief popularity among furniture makers then. The phrase male quilting has often been applied to American folk marquetry. The best known of the American folk artisans was a New Englander named Frederick Hazen, who helped build the sleeper cars of the Pullman Railway Company. The interiors of the elegant sleeper cars used many veneers, and Hazen amassed thousands of sheets to work from. The next few videos will focus on the works of contemporary artisans, such as Silas Koff and, and Patrick Edwards, and others. Thank you.